Throughout history, music artists of all genres have included lyrics in their songs that stir some controversy and provoke a strong public reaction. But lately, it seems that the media has targeted rap and rappers for being socially insensitive and perpetuating violence toward women and others. From Rick Ross to Lil Wayne, artists are catching flack about their lyrics. So when do words cross the line? Should rappers be given a free pass? Where's the space between artistic freedom and legitimate critique. Joining us to discuss all of this in our Google Hangout is Ebony.com's news and lifestyle editor, Jamila Lemieux. We also have the Washington Post columnist, Rahel Tesfamerium, and we're joined by Rosa Clemente. She's an African-American studies doctoral candidate at UMass. She's a longtime activist and a vice presidential candidate uh, in the 2008 elections for the Green Party. I want to thank you all for being here. Rahel, I'm going to start with you. We've heard uh, over the last few weeks, a series of artists get challenged in the media for their lyrics. Uh, I think the first one was Lil Wayne. And, and maybe we can all talk about Lil Wayne for a little bit uh, before we move on. Uh, he had a very interesting lyric. Can we, can we, can we uh, bring this up? St it says, uh, still about to put rims on my skateboard wheels. Beat that pussy up like Emmett Till. About to put rims on my skateboard wheels, beat that pussy up like Emmett Till. After that lyric comes out, the, the, the civil rights generation spoke out. Even Emmett Till's family spoke out and said, look, this is a problem. Uh, people debated it. What's your initial reaction when you hear something like that? Well, obviously a lot of people would say that he's allowed um, artistic expression, you know, that he's, that he's allowed to be who he is as an artist, and it's unfair for us to um, try to hold him accountable to this politics of respectability. My argument is just that there has to be a line that should not be crossed, a line where um, we say that this is off limits. There are some, some things that are so sacred and uh, so painful to certain communities that you don't use them as a punchline. Um, and, and Emmett Till for me was one of those. And so we have to wonder what is his commitment to us as a people? I mean, he's often talked about Katrina and the lack of concern that people have had for what happened with you know New Orleans. Um, so how does he connect so deeply to something that's local and intimate, but completely detach that from how that relates to what happened to Emmett Till? So I, I question the, you know, his sincerity when he puts out certain music saying there's an injustices in America because they hit home, but he can't make that connection when it's not as intimate to him. A, there's, is there space, though, uh, to, to push back and say, look, you know, he can have a, a, a real civic commitment to issues in New Orleans. He can have a real critique of the president. He can have a critique of war, but he can also have a space where he... Uh, demonstrates a kind of artistic freedom to say, I want to talk about sex and sexuality, and in this way, I'm just simply using Emmett, Emmett Till as the backdrop. Well, I, I mean, you know, recently, and I know we're going to talk about this, about the uh, Rick Ross issue. I mean, my point is more so that if we continue to rely on an artist, we're going to continue to get lines like this. I mean, they are going to continue to make music. We're going to hear these lyrics over and over again. So I'm at a point now where I really, we can't police them. There's no way that they're going to continue to, um, that they're going to start putting out content that we would want, you know. Um, I think it's in many ways a, a demand for accountability that some things just never see the light of day. I, I, I just, I don't know, I, I struggle with this just a little bit, uh, Rosa. There's a, there's a space for artistic freedom here too. Now, what, if I were rapping, would I use Emmett Till? Probably not. But one could argue that he wasn't attempting to disrespect Emmett Till, he was simply trying to uh, create a kind of imagery. To me, the, no, the, the, the language of beating the pussy up is more problematic than the Emmett Till reference. But, yeah. but, but invoking Emmett Till, are, are, we, are, we, are we becoming too, uh, too prudish? Are we becoming too rigid? Are we becoming uh, so almost religious in our commitment to certain people and figures that, that we, we deny rappers the ability to express themselves fully? Well, Paul Robeson said it best when he said that the artist has the ultimate responsibility to his or her community. And I don't think it's about censorship. None of us talk about that. You have the right to put out what you put out, and we have the responsibility and right to hold you accountable for what you put out. And unfortunately, the rap 
industrial complex has made it easy for people to make money off the death and denigration of, of black women, uh, of black men, our history as a people here and as Latinos. So I think that's how we have to also be building the conversation. And I, I find it interesting that these three sisters that have been doing amazing work, it's Rick Ross that has become the tipping point. And we're here to say, this is how we hold it accountable, but we can also, again, really begin to break down what I'm, what I'm terming the rap industrial complex and who makes these decisions on the top. We have to hold them just as accountable. Okay, and, and Jamila, we're going to jump to Rick, we're going to talk about Rick Ross in a minute because his lyrics are on another uh, another level, perhaps in terms of this critique. Um, but Jamila, I want to talk. I want to stay on Lil Wayne just for a second. Uh, does I mean, again, everybody has a right to say, look, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to buy Lil Wayne. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, hear an Emmett Till reference. But are we, are we becoming too rigid? Are we not allowing space for creativity? If a stand-up comedian were to stand up on stage and say something like that, would that be too, would that be too much, right? I mean, if it were in a film, would it be too much? Um, saying I'm gonna beat the pussy up like Emmett Till for some is not at all disrespecting Emmett Till. It's a call on, um, it, 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 it actually conjures up a historical reference that other people might not remember. And, and again, for me, saying, I'm gonna beat the pussy up might be more problematic than mentioning Emmett Till. To me, the Emmett Till part may or may not be the issue. Um, I'd say for me, they're both problematic. You know, the mm -hmm. idea of beating the pussy up in a manner that is so, you know, violent that it's 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 obliterated, right? It, it's unrecognizable, it's ugly, um, it hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's not talking about consensual pleasure. I mean, again, women enjoy rough sex, and I don't have I was a about problem to say, with let's that. Not, not, let's also not foreclose on any erotic possibilities. Right. You know, there are nights right. where you might want to beat it up. The, the question becomes if that's the only way hip-hop thinks about... And it is. It, you know, it, it's not about I'm going to beat it up because you want me to. It's I'm going to beat it up because that's what's going to please me. And again, I, I don't think that we're becoming mm. too rigid. I think we've been having these same conversations for many years around rap music. And I think that we've failed to be rigid enough, which is why in 2013, after 20 plus years of hip hop, feminist journalism and activism, mm. we're still dealing with, you know, not artists that are on the periphery, but Wayne and Ross are two of the biggest rappers right. in the world right now. You know, we have to take them to task for lines like this. So, you know, I have no problem with talking about sex. I have no problems with being subversive or being dark. But I, I, I think it's incredibly disrespectful to invoke, you know, the name of Emmett Till in this way. I thought it was disrespectful when Kanye West did it in reference to his car accident. See, and, and, and that's where it feels like it's going too far. Kanye West had a reference uh, in The Wire where he talked about his car accident. He said, uh, that her, imagine how my girl felt, like, right? Uh, scary yeah. how a guy looked like Emmett Till, saying that her, his face would look like Emmett Till, whose face was obviously yeah. swollen five times its normal size after a brutal beating uh, right. uh, in 1955. It, it, it seems to me that in that case, Kanye was actually forcing people to say, who's, who's Emmett Till? I can't tell you how many young kids came to me and said, who's Emmett Till? And it gave me an opportunity to talk to him. I remember one day I was literally out with, um, what was his name? Uh, 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 Oskino, from the, or Sparks rather, from, from the... Uh, from the Young Guns, and we were talking about Kanye, and he said, yo, that we, it, was, it was in like 2003, 2004, and we were talking about that lyric, and he said, yo, who is Emmett Till? You know what I mean? But, and, and I had a chance to talk to Sparks for like 10 minutes about Emmett Till, right. and, we, and, and suddenly he was interested in it. So, I But mean, imagine someone like Kanye, who, you know, he's from Chicago, his mother was a professor, his father was an, act, was an activist at some point, so he was exposed to the idea of Emmett Till and who he was and what his story represents to black people, um, particularly to black men. Um, imagine if the line had been in a different song where he said the police are out here beating up black men like Emmett Till. But, but, but then aren't we, you know, I, I, I'm just, because I agree with you to some extent, I just, I worry that we're asking too much and we're foreclosing on not just uh, artistic possibilities, but even political possibilities when we do that. But I want to bring someone else into the conversation. We have joining us right now by phone, rapper, uh, producer, extraordinaire, entrepreneur, and all-around genius, Tyler Kwali. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's good, good to have you on the show. We've been talking uh, about hip hop lyrics uh, and sort of what mm -hmm. it means for us to police them to a certain extent. Do we have a responsibility to say challenge a Lil Wayne when he says, "I'm a beat pussy up like Emmett Till," 
or is there space for that kind of artistry in our community? Um, well, one, you know, I don't believe in condemning or censoring any art. Um, I definitely believe in challenging it and uh, challenging our artists to be more responsible in their lyrics. But too often with hip hop, we have a, an incredible double standard where we, um, where we accept it from rappers we like and don't accept it from rappers we don't like. And I think if we're going to challenge the artists, it's an empty challenge when we challenge the artists all the time and wipe our hands clean, but don't challenge ourselves, don't challenge our education system, don't challenge our parents, and, and don't challenge each other. When we place the, the blame squarely on the shoulders of artists, I, I, think that's, I, I think that's dismissive of how great the problem is. I, I, don't think our, I don't think lyrics ever are the root causes of problems, uh, only the symptoms of the problems. And I think that if we want to change the uh to want to change what these artists are talking about we need to change the community that that these artists are drawing inspiration from that's an interesting point what do you all say that rosa push back uh I'm well i'm not pushing head. back as much as we have to do both okay like the problem within again like i don't really consider personally rick ross or little wayne part of hip-hop culture and that could be my rigid standard but that's the standard yes. i'm going to stand behind Right. So in saying that, that puts me on a whole different radical perspective than some of the most progressive people in hip hop, because I think some things are sacred in our culture. You don't got cats rapping about the Holocaust. Right. And making fun of that too much. Right. And I think that speaks to just how we have to view lyrics as well. Look, now, now see, you have a right. You have a right. You have a right. Hold, hold on one second, Rosa. Let, let, let Tyler push back, because I was going to push back on that I'm point, too. Go, go ahead. I completely and totally disagree. And I think that that's part of the problem. The moment that you say, I don't consider them part of hip-hop culture, then why should they listen to you? Why should they care about anything you have to say? They are part of hip-hop culture. Because I don't see, hip -hop, you, I don't see rap, the they, rap they, industry they, really representing hip-hop culture. I see but they, artists but they are who are rappers hip -hop culture. They are, are part of hip-hop culture, culture, whether you... They are part of hip-hop culture whether you think they are or not. That's just a fact. Okay, so if they, they are, are part, part of it, like, like, then like, I say this. Then, then, then they do have a responsibility not to be rapping at 40 years old about date mm -hmm. rape. You know, and that's I agree the with problem that. right I agree now. That's that. what, but if we want, I right. agree with that totally. But I if we want to change them, then the smarter play, if we want to change them, then the smarter play is to embrace them with love. If you tell somebody... Fuck you. I don't you ain't a part of hip hop culture. You're a monster. Talib. You're destroying the culture. None of us have said that. None now, of us have said no, that. But, but, but you are saying that. No, that's not what I'm saying. You are saying that when you say they're not a part of hip hop culture. I don't want to get hung up on the call. I don't want to debate someone like Talib Kwame who has done amazing work. Rosa, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Everybody hold on for one second. Because I want to make sure the audience stays with y'all. I joined this conversation to say this. If that the first thing Rosa, the first thing you said when you when when they brought this up was first of all i don't consider them a part of hip-hop culture that's right. condemning them and that's i explained them. why at, 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 i explained but, 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 why. but that's your but, but 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 hold on hold on hold on whether you whether your opinion is that you personally the personally don't feel like they are part of hip-hop culture one is not true they are part of hip-hop culture they are whether you feel like they are or not and two if you're starting your ex if you're starting your process of trying to change the way that they rap by saying i'm dismissive of your efforts entirely then why would they listen to you they have no reason to listen okay. to you the so, only reason we have to embrace people with love none of these people are evil none of, none of these people are, are evil trying to bring down our community on purpose they're misguided the same as their fans i don't care if rick ross is 40 years old he's a misguided 40 year old person you know, and and when when we embrace them, we have to embrace them with love. Like that, everything everyone's saying about that line is correct. Rick Ross condoned rape in that song, and he shouldn't, and he should apologize. And his apology that he offered was unacceptable. His apology that he offered was was dodged the issue, and 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 let, leads us to believe that either he's naive or he's just stupid. Right, I would like to believe. Second, I would like. Hold on, to, second, you know, and I, I don't think that's. I don't Qua, think hold on one second, hold on one second, because I want to I want to catch the audience up. We only talked about Lil Wayne. I want to I want to catch everybody up out there about what we're talking about with regard to Rick Ross. Rick Ross recently put out a, a, a song. He was on a, a guest guest uh, doing a guest verse on a song, and the lyric actually went, "Put Molly all in her champagne. She ain't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that. She ain't even know it. All right. The idea being that he slipped something in her drink, and she uh, and then he took her home and had sex with her. Uh, since then. 
Uh, Rick Ross has attempted to respond to it. It was, for me, one of the most underwhelming apologies uh, that we've seen in recent history. Can we, can we show Rick Ross's response to this? I want to make sure this is clear that woman is the most precious gift known to man. Right, right. You understand? And it was a misunderstanding with a lyric, right. a misinterpretation where, you know, uh, the term rape was, wasn't used. And, you know, I would never use the term rape. Right. You know, in, in my records and as far as my camp, hip hop don't condone that. The streets don't condone right. that. Right, right, right. Nobody condones that. You know? I, I, want, I want to go to you, Jamila, and, and then Rahel, because I'm hearing the conversation. I want to move the conversation forward just a little bit. Let's, let's concede for a minute, a minute that all of these artists uh, that we've mentioned so far, particularly Lil Wayne and Rick Ross, are part of hip-hop. And I understand the distinction that Rose is raising, and I don't want us to get hung there, and I respect Rose's, Rose's position on that, even if we, we ultimately disagree. But if we're saying that they're all within a broader uh, cultural and, and certainly racial community, uh, how do we deal with a Rick Ross who makes a lyric like that and then for all intents and purposes really doesn't apologize for it. He says, I didn't say rape. He says it's a misunderstanding. Yet he never says what, who misunderstood what, how we could have otherwise interpreted, put something in her champagne, she ain't even know it, I took it home and enjoyed that. I mean, so how do we respond to that? How do we deal with that? And is that fundamentally different than Lil Wayne who's making a, a clever play on words in his mind on Emmett Till or like Kanye did with Emmett Till? Is there a difference? And if so, how do we deal with that difference? Uh, there's a difference uh, because of what the things that they said were different, but I think that both lines really do speak to rape culture in hip hop, in black culture, in American culture. You know, a lot of what we criticize about hip hop, we tend to make it black specific or ghetto specific or male specific. It's just an American problem. Okay, so you have white men, you have white male politicians that have said things that are very similar to what Rick Ross said. You know, so it's not to say that hip hop is the problem. Like, you know, I do agree with Talib that hip hop is not the root cause. We're seeing broken, misguided people with a huge global platform um, speaking to and from the place of being damaged, um, speaking to damaged people about their own damage. I'm not as loving um, for anyone who did see my article on ebony.com. I did say Afric Ross. And it's not just because he's 40. It's because I've had, you know, longstanding issues with him and what he represents as a member of the hip hop community. But, you know, I do understand that speaking to him with love, which I think is the responsibility of people like Talib, you all can have a conversation that I can't have, you know, as peers, as artists. I'm not a rapper. I'm not as vested in hip hop as other people. I'm more vested in black people. But and that's why I respond that point, to a rapper like Quali because I see that he's vested in both hip hop and black people. If you we know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 I, I totally hear you, Jamila. I guess what I'm wondering though, is if we, can, if we start from the premise also that hip hop is not an exclusive place for rape culture and that rape culture yeah. is not indigenous to, to hip hop culture, then do right. we do hip hop a, a disservice? Is it, is it unfair to hip hop for us to heap a disproportionate amount of critique and blame, and certainly we do, right? I mean, when we, we could look throughout pop culture and see rape stuff everywhere, but hip hop seems to be getting more of it. Ashley Judd came out last year and said hip hop right. has a rape culture. She didn't say pop culture has a rape culture. She didn't say right. sports has a rape culture. She said hip hop has a rape culture. Rahel, if we do that, is it unfair to hip hop? Do we suddenly create a, a sense of pathology around hip hop that's unfair? What's unfair about hip hop is the fact that there's this um, there's this one sided image of masculinity that Rick Ross and Lil Wayne in some ways begin to represent all black men because those are the dominant voices in hip hop. So I think a large part of it is my concern of, of how masses of, of young African American and Latino men have their conceptions of relationships and sexuality and masculinity shaped by these artists that they may be listening to all the time. And so it, it has a lot to do with the fact that there aren't, there isn't balance. I mean, you might hear a Talib track, but the Rick Ross and, and the Little Waynes of the world are gonna always drown that out because they have their pulse on radio stations, on television and music videos. That's an interesting point, Kwali. One of the things Jamila just mentioned was this idea that peer to peer, there's a space for critique. Would do you feel comfortable going to other artists and saying, look, even what you just said right now, which is that Rick Ross was wrong and should apologize, would you feel comfortable saying that to Rick Ross? I have no problem saying that to Rick Ross, but I, I but I have no problem saying that to Rick Ross because because 
I'm approaching him with love. I'm like, listen, you are a part of this culture. You, 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 you make you, you have a beautiful contribution. You, Little Wayne, Drake, whoever people wanted this, y'all all can contribute beautifully to this culture. And 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 I, you know, it's like that's if I didn't love them, I wouldn't care. If I went, if I didn't love them, I would I would be dismissive. I have to say that the reason why I had to say Rick Ross was wrong in that situation, why I feel like he was wrong, and I said it on my Twitter, and I said it again now, is because I claim to represent hip hop culture. I claim. I I can't claim to represent hip hop culture and then shirk away from the issues. But at the same time, if I'm calling him a monster, if I'm calling him, if I'm coming at him automatically like, yo, you have nothing to offer this, then then I'm 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 just as bad. And and we we can't we can't approach it like that. And I think that all of us should. I don't think it's just on me as an artist. All of us should approach it like that. You know, like I, I really I really do feel like that. There was an interesting conversation between you and uh, Lupe Fiasco Lupe, Lupe Fiasco yesterday about. Mm-hmm. Uh, the power of hip hop and, and of lyrics in particular uh, to produce certain kinds of social realities and outcomes. You know, do lyrics actually cause people to do certain things? Do lyrics actually cause? Does music actually cause? No, they don't. They're no more than video games do, and no, and, and that's 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 an excuse that politicians use. Lupe Fiasco uh, grew up listening to gangster rap. He said it on his Twitter. He said, "I grew up listening to Spice One and Beethoven." Well, guess what? Both Spice One and Beethoven make up Lupe Fiasco. No one could just listen to positive music. It's yin and yang. You need a balance. Do I think saying that you? gonna slip a girl a molly in the lyric and and and, and take advantage of her is, is taking it too far hell yeah that's taking it too far and us as hip-hop we need to stand up and say yo homie like rick ross said in his apology the streets go, don't condone that i'm saying look the streets don't condone that apology it wasn't good enough that that apology didn't deal with the issues but at the same time i'm i'm hoping that you come back and, uh, and make a record about it i'm hoping that you come back and add to it imagine if Tupac and biggie didn't get killed at 25 years old. Imagine what they would grow into if we if we um, allow them the, the possibilities. My my argument with Lupe ended with with a simple word. It ended with not argument but debate with the word condemnation and the word evil. He felt like we could we should condemn evil things in hip hop. I don't believe uh, Rick Ross is inherently evil. I don't believe Chief Keith is inherently evil. I don't believe Lil Wayne is inherently evil. I don't believe these people are evil. I don't believe we should condemn them. I believe we should criticize, we should discuss, we should express our disappointment, and we should not support when they come with things that are not worth supporting. But we should, we should welcome them into this culture and welcome them to change. Too often, we base our judgments based on region and motion. They're not making the type of hip-hop we like. Biggie Smalls had great lyrics. Eminem had great lyrics. You know, but we forgive them because they make type of hip hop we, we claim to like, real hip hop or underground hip hop. We should call all rappers to task on the same level. That's that's and an interesting I think point, Rose. That's part of what feminists have been doing in this culture for over twenty five years. And the thing right, is and I that agree. I, I think that right. Talib is right and when he pushed back on me having this strict definition with hip hop. And I, I'm, I'm down to take that critique, you know? And I think that's important that we can have this debate. And I think it's only in a place of hip hop can we have these debates and not debate each other as people, but debate ideas. Now listen, when I dropped the Rick Ross response, my thing was at this point, I don't really care about the industry in terms of putting all my energy into targeting that aspect. My concern was, First, when are men finally going to stand up against this with us? There's not a time in hip hop where something has affected a black man that you have not seen black and brown women joining that fight. And what we're saying as women is that we're trying to attack this rape culture, whether it's Rick Ross, whether it's Steubenville, whether it's Our Future, whether it was too short 18 months ago, that this is part of something that's been building. I think Rick Ross has become the tipping point. So I'm more... I, I'm not ready to say, Rick Ross, I love you and I embrace you, but I'm ready to say that we need brothers who are his peers, not only to say that to him, but to stand up against rape culture. Because I was talking to an educator yesterday and I asked him, do you think this stuff influenced kids? And he says, we don't put all of it on the influence of the lyric, but you have to understand to young people growing up that sometimes these are commands and become blueprints for their behavior, and we need to fight against that as well. Let me put some. Let me bring some comments in because I want to change gears before we run. I got MCK Swift right <coughs> in who says rape culture doesn't belong to hip hop. F O H. Uh, for those who aren't on Twitter, that means fuck out of here. It's the dominant culture in general that is oh. a rape 
culture. Can I please? Fuerche, let me, let me go through all these comments and I'm going to let you all jump in. Fuerche <laughs> says hip culture, hip hop culture doesn't exist in a vacuum. There are white execs and buyers of music that condone and promote this particularly grotesque form of misogyny. Nothing particular to blacks or hip hop culture. Emphatical says, when is Mark going to talk about the consumers of these types of music? Many consumers are females. Uh, I guess he means women, by the oh. way. People produce what people consume. It's that simple. And of course, speaking response says, a man who sings about rape like that is evil, is disgusting. Mm. Jamila, I know you want to jump in, and I want, I want you to jump in before I change gears, because we got to talk Beyonce before we run. Okay. First of all, <laughs> water's wet. Women have been listening to rap music since day one, okay? Like, there's always a guy who wants to hop up and act like he, you know, invented the wheel with that one. Like, oh, females listen to rap. Boom. That's it. You got your rape right there. It's all your fault. No, this is a, this is a, a type of music. This is a culture that has been sustained by men and women, by blacks and whites, by Jews, and, and all sorts of people. OK, so we're not putting you mean the Jew, blame Jew, on Jews and Gentiles and Christians. You mean Jews everybody. and Gentiles I, I, and Christians. I just yes. know if you just say Jews, there'll be a whole different I know, response. Like we're so gonna, you're not even going to have a show tomorrow. I, I just, like, no, you no, never have black I, guests keep again. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I know you didn't mean it that way. I, I want to make sure that people knew you didn't mean it that way. Keep rolling. No, I didn't. Absolutely. But, you know, all that to say, if you want to talk to black people and young black males in particular, hip hop is a great way to start the conversation. So I can talk to a 19 year old brother about rape culture using the Rick Ross line in a way that maybe if I just said, hey, did you hear about what happened in Steubenville? You know, it, it, it may resonate better with him if we started the place of Rick Ross. Now, I'm not saying that that means that there's value in the line and I'm glad that it happened, but that's the way in which rape culture is often being presented to our men and boys and our women and girls. So no, it's not about saying that hip hop is responsible for it or that it started there, but it lives there. So no, we don't make excuses for it because rock has rape culture or politicians can be pro rape culture as well. This is our, you want to talk to our community? These are the things that are coming in and out of it. So but, but, we can't but, but there is a converse, there is a legitimate critique that says, look, we can't just look to the artists. There's production and there's consumption. Absolutely. And, and there's it's a economy the around it. It starts with the labels. It starts with the, the, the people who consume the music. It's all mm -hmm. around it's everywhere. the world. Okay, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. We don't want to normalize that. But putting any responsibility on the artist does not mean you're not putting any responsibility on the consumer. It goes... There's enough responsibility to go around. Get a right. place. And, and, and all and, and, our responses were not just about the lyrics. If you right. read Jamila, if you read Rahel, and if you look at my video, we go beyond just the attack on the artist, which is always the easiest thing to do, especially when there are artists out there that are political activists. And as much as we support, we, we need to support each other in, in growing this culture and maintaining it the way we need it to maintain. No, absolutely. There was one, there was one conversation, and Aquali, I want to bring you back into this as well. Uh, you, can, you can be our, uh, our gender expert. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to set you up to let the ladies uh, push back against you a little bit. But Beyonce wrote this piece, uh, or, or wrote, wrote, has a new song, Bow Down, right? And uh, she says, I know when you were little girls, you dreamt of being in my world. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Respect that. Bow down, bees. When you hear a song like that, again, is this, is this something that should have prompted the type of outrage that we saw? And in many ways, the feminist circles were divided on whether this was a song of empowerment or Beyonce being completely out of character, out of pocket, and just flat out wrong. Um, is this, for some though, this is an opportunity for Beyonce to, to exercise, perform a different sense of self. When we police lyrics yeah, I mean, too much, do we, restrict, right, do we restrict an artist's ability to be somebody different? I mean, well, first of all, to Jam like, first of all, Jamila and Rosa, like, I'm, I'm in great company with these, with these sisters and everybody else who's in the conversation that you mark, and like, you know, me and Rosa, you know, Rosa, you know, me and Rosa, we go, we go back, like, we've been doing this for a long, long, long time. So I want to first say before I answer, I appreciate like the commitment and what Rosa said about feminists been fighting this fight alone for so long, she's completely and totally right. And that's why it's become so frustrating. And that's why Rick Ross lyric becomes a tipping point. But as, as far as Beyonce, I mean, look, that's Beyonce basically making a hip hop song, you know? She's basically flexing her, her weight and flexing her muscles and saying, look, she, I don't know if she just got tired of people talking mess about her online or she just felt like felt feisty. I was, as, as an artist, man, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for art. We are human beings first and we have a responsibility to our community as human beings. 
Our only responsibility as artists is to create honest art. That's it. That's it. That's the end or be all of it. But now, a responsible person, human being the uses their art. To... A responsible user, human being uses their art as a platform to, to change opinion, to do different things. That's what we do as human beings. But that's not our responsibility as artists. That's responsibility as teachers, garbage men, lawyers, artists, community activists, whatever. What about the person? I want every. I want everyone. Before we're gonna, we gotta run. But I want everybody in the panel to respond to this. What? But I'm gonna start with you, Kwali. What about the person? Just to follow up. What about the person who says, "Yeah, but Beyonce has Michelle Obama saying that she looks up to her. Beyonce has our daughters." Uh, admiration. She's somebody the kids look to, and she was performing a certain model of what gender could look like. She's the one that said, us girls got to stick together. We run the world. And then you and Keisha Cole, for example, was somebody who came on Twitter and says, well, one, one day you say we got to stick together, and now you're telling us to bow down, that Beyonce, because she has a particular stature and a certain amount of admiration, mm -hmm. has a different type mm -hmm. of response. I mean, if you had made a song about putting Molly and Champagne, the world would be, would, would be responding differently than if Rick Ross did it even, because there's a heightened expectation right, of who you I, are. Right, but I do make plenty of songs. I'm considered a positive rap artist, but I make plenty, plenty of rap songs telling these other dudes, yo, fall back. I'm better than you. I make plenty of rap songs like that. And artists are contradictory. People need to get over it. Our artists, just like every other human being, have different days, different moods, contradictions, and they should be allowed to express those contradictions. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Rosa. No, I mean, I, I, look, I'm never, never have I been about censorship, so put it out there. Like I said at the beginning to me is that we also can hold that accountable and that well, would you the hold work that, that accountable? I, that, that's what I'm saying, Rosa. Oh, would you yes, go, no, look. Would you I, go to, I, hold on, let me finish the question. Would you go to Beyonce and say, look, yes. you know, part of what patriarchy has done is force women to think they have to compete with each other, force women to think they have to tear each other down and to use the B word as, 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 a, as, a, as a term, as a kind of epithet hurled against them. Would you go out and challenge them the same way you've challenged Rick Ross? Would you challenge Beyonce no, the same way you challenged Rick Ross? No, I, I and I don't, I don't like, I don't even listen to Beyonce. I don't even really listen to radio on the music. I, when that thing came down for me, I, I'm siding more with like, you don't need to put, you don't need to do this. You're Beyonce in that sense. For me, why I challenge hip hop. It's because I love hip hop. I love the culture. I love that it's a global phenomenon that gives young people power to speak truth to power, to act, to organize it. And that uh, it's never been, again, just about the lyric. But in this sense, the reason I keep saying it's the tipping point is because this song explicitly is talking about raping a no doubt. raping. And we need to. We I think we're all on the same page on, on the Rick Ross context. thing. I think we're all you know, on the same page on Rick Ross thing. I do want to. I, I, I just want to give uh, Rahel and I got literally seconds, but I want to give Rahel and Jamila a chance to respond to that. Rahel, what say you? Well, I think a lot of people already know what I say because I wrote a piece saying that I thought it was in many ways counterproductive to a lot of what she's done. It's not to say that she can't have contradictions. It's not to say that she shouldn't be empowered to engage in hip hop bravado. But at the same time, I think that. Um, when you simply are an extension of all the things that exploit and dominate us, when you use violent language, I don't see how you're furthering our empowerment. Just because she's a woman doing it, to me, is not a sense of empowerment. She simply, you, you, and you can't even argue that she's mimicking it. If that is who she is, I got to really wonder when you view putting women down and calling them tricks and bees and saying that, you know, they need to bow down to you and you'll smack them is how you feel empowered. Why, did, why does it take that for a woman to feel empowered? Fair enough. Jamila, I'll give you the last word. You're a parent. What say? What, I am. <laughs> and you've been, you're, you're an experienced parent. When, when, when you say... Yes. <laughs> for all of like four days now. When you, when you, when you yeah. say, like, I mean, when, when you think about this, your daughter's going to grow up listening to these lyrics and uh, admiring them you know, figures like Beyonce, if not Beyonce, you know, when you hear something like this, is this a space for that contradiction to be exercised? Should we be, allow artists to be contradictory? Should we be challenging Beyonce the same way y'all went on Rick Ross? Is there space to say this, this is one thing, this is of a different sort, one is, one is more intense than the other? I mean, what's the line? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's a space to be contradictory. You know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with bravado. And I think there's something cool about Beyonce, like considering her proximity to hip hop, you know, well before her marriage um, and, and the fact that she's married to one of the most famous rappers in the world, playing hip hop and, and taking on bravado and, and boasting. That's cool. I just think there's a way that you do it. And I didn't necessarily love the way that she did this. So even though the production was fun, it's just kind of like, when the most popular girl in school, who's the captain of the cheerleading squad, 
and the prom queen <laughs> kind of tells you all those things. It's not quite as fun as when the girl who's kind of off to the side and a little weird tells you how dope she is. Fair you enough. know, and it just, it, it felt a little nasty and a little mean spirited. But then, you know, but, but there's a part of me. It's just interesting that the outrage to Beyonce, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm personally not saying we should be outraged by Beyonce. I actually haven't even thought through what I think about the Beyonce thing. But I'm, I'm just noticing that there are different levels of outrage depending upon what we're talking about. But we'll keep this conversation going. I want to thank you all for joining us. Jamila Lemieux, always good to see you. Congrats again. Rahel, Tess for Mariam, always a pleasure. We enjoy your pieces in the Washington Post. Rosa Clemente has not only written a bunch, she has a piece in Ebony Magazine recently uh, detailing what happened here uh, with the tragic shooting, but she's also started a video campaign to deal with the Rick Ross rape issue. Tell her quietly, I know you're traveling. I know you're out of the country. I appreciate you calling in and offering your brilliance as always. Good to talk to you all. Thank you for joining us. Hey, I love you all, man. Oh, love you too, bro. Yeah. Love all of you all. Amazing, wonderful people. Thank you for joining the conversation. You can continue to be a part of the conversation by clicking our red B and on air guest button.